I'm exploring the conservation of energy statement and I'm going to explore that conservation of energy statement uh, where the change in the energy is just is equal to the net amount of energy added or subtracted by external agents to the system. Um, and so let's check out A and B. So in between the time or situation A and the situation B is some sort of process. And the effect of this process, which is a work done by an external person, the effect of this process is to cause the energy in situation B to be different from the energy in situation A. So delta E, we could, um, we'll say that we're studying the change in the energy between the later time B and the earlier time A, like this. So EB minus EA. Um, according to the conservation of energy, the only reason these two energies can be different is by this work process that happens in between A and B um, by some external issue. So that work that was done here was a, a couple of things, actually, if you think about it. First, this person needed to begin applying a lifting force on the ball and that lifting force had to become at least as big as the weight force acting on A and quite honestly at the very beginning at least a little bit bigger than the weight force acting on A. So they turn on a slightly bigger force than the weight so that the net force on the ball is positive upwards. So that net force causes an acceleration of the ball and the ball can move upwards, right? We need to move it. So in order to move it, I need to do a little bit of extra forcing to give the ball some kinetic energy. But the point is, is the kinetic energy might be not zero, but the person relaxes the force just a little bit such that the kinetic energy of the ball just becomes zero again. There it is, zero again. But even though the kinetic energy might have started at zero and become zero again, during the process, the kinetic energy wasn't zero. Um, but that's besides the point. The work done lifting the object is actually, like this person did have to do some work. They had to fight gravity over the distance h with a force at least as big as mg. And so the mg times the h is the work done by the person. You could say that they also had to add in some kinetic energy to get it started, but they got to remove the kinetic energy later, so I'm not going to include any kinetic energy terms because whatever was added at the beginning was subtracted out later. So no change in kinetic energy for the work done. It's just the change in the gravitational potential energy. So this thing right here is the work done by the net external force. So let's look at EA and EB. So E at A, so the total energy of the ball system is the kinetic energy at A plus the gravitational potential energy at A. So the kinetic energy at A is zero because it's at rest. And the gravitational potential energy at A, well, actually, I don't know what it is. But what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to choose the zero of gravitational potential energy to be at the tabletop. So the gravitational potential energy is going to be bigger if you're above it and negative if you're below it. So I have chosen what's called the zero of gravitational potential energy. E at B, however, is 
zero kinetic energy, right? It's at rest again, plus the potential energy at B is not zero because I've chosen for this problem, this entire conservation of energy story, I've already made the choice of where zero is at for gravitational potential energy. So the gravitational potential energy of the ball when it is higher up here is the mass of the ball times gravity times the height above the uh, zero position. So this is mgh. So very carefully, I'd, love, I'd like you to see um, that the total energy at A is called zero. It's zero plus zero. And the total energy at B is not zero. This, the system, has energy after the work was done. Um, and the system before the work was done, we say that it has no energy. Um, another thing that's really care you have to be really careful about is even though the right hand side over here is MGH, the term that sits here is not called potential energy. The term that sits here is the reason why the energy can change. It is the net work done by external forces, external agents or objects outside the system. And that happens to be MGH as well. And so what you can see is since EB minus EA is delta E, EB is MGH, EA is zero, so MGH minus zero, according to the conservation of energy statement right here, that the net work done by external forces is the reason why energy of a system can change. Here we have the net work by external forces was MGH. And so MGH equals MGH. Um, yeah, so let's go on and study some transitions uh, that happen later. In particular, I think it'd be interesting right now to study... I'll show you. Uh, I'm going to draw it on the next page. It's going to be essentially from C to D. Yeah, let's do C to D. So. C is a situation of the ball being at rest a height h above the tabletop. And so let's call that C. And I'm going to cheat a little bit because if you look at D, the ball hasn't really made it very far down. If you look compared to the whole height h, it's only made it like one fourth of h down. But I'm going to pretend like the situation D was when the ball made it halfway down, just for a, a nice fraction. So here is C, and I'm going to uh, cheat a little bit and put D here. So this is the situation where the ball is now um, at only H over 2 from the floor. Okay, and once again, remember that we chose the gravitational potential energy of zero for this problem at the tabletop, right? So um, let's uh, write down the conservation of energy statement, the conservation of energy is like this. The only reason that the total energy can change, so this is delta E, is if there is work done by a net external force. And from C to D, there has been no, there is no external influence. So no net force external. So the integral of F net external dotted with any sort of falling through a distance y is only going to be zero. 
this is the work done by the net external force. There is no there is no net external force, so there is no work done by a net external force. There are no external agents influencing or adding or subtracting energy to my system from C to D. And so this term right here from C to D, so ED minus EC, this is the change in the energy we are studying. It is zero. You have to be the physicist that makes the decision that there is no external force acting. So that means, or the, yeah, uh, no uh, net work done by an external force. There's definitely internal forces. And internal forces I am not including in the external work being done. Um, the internal force that's at work here is being accounted for in the potential energy. It's the gravitational force. The gravi gravity force is not external to the system. In fact, it's internal because whenever I write down the energies, whoops, at the, at the two times, C and D, I am including the potential energy at C and D. So this is me including the gravity force as an internal force. It does not get counted in the external world uh, of forces. So this is the kinetic energy at D, the gravitational potential energy at D. This is the kinetic energy at C, and the gravitational potential energy at C. So the conservation of energy tells me that actually ED and EC, they cannot have a difference. The difference is zero. So if the difference is zero, then ED, uh, equals EC. So this comes from the conservation of energy. And then we can use what comes from the conservation of energy uh, to, to conclude something about the kinetic energies and the potential energies. So let's go do that. So I know that the energy has not changed. But what has happened is the forms of the energy have changed, right? But the total energy did not change. Forms of energy have changed. Let's see this happen. So E sub C is the total energy in the situation C. So the total energy is there is no kinetic energy, but there is gravitational potential energy. E at D, there it's definitely not zero. But I don't know how much kinetic energy in situation D there is. So I'm just going to write a placeholder. So this is an unknown. I don't know its value yet. But what I do know is I know the value of the gravitational potential energy in situation D because I've already chosen what's called the zero and I know where the ball is at. It's at mgh over 2. And so since the conservation of total energy tells me that this is true, then I can go and making conclusion, I can say that 0 plus mgh, that's the energy in situation C, is equal to the unknown kinetic energy plus the known potential energy. And you can conclude then that the kinetic energy in situation D, you just subtract this mgh over 2 from both sides. And you see you have a whole mgh and a half of mgh. So you are left over with a half of mgh. So the idea is the energy, the total energy, didn't change. Here is the statement that the total energy before and the total energy after have the same value. But earlier, I had no kinetic energy. And I had a bunch of potential energy. And later, I have some kinetic energy and less potential energy. The energy has changed form.